Hello and welcome to Sherry Hills Ministries. I'm Sherry Hills and today we will continue with our ministry series, How to Engage in an Exercise Effective Christian Communication and Deed. The deed we'll talk about today is put off, put off. So the Bible talks about putting off and putting on. And um, to put off is to delay, postpone, avoid, um, even to feel intense dislike. So like if someone says that someone, they were put off by someone. Um, cause to feel embarrassment, disheartened. But the main um, way that we'll be looking at it is, and I believe the way that it's intended in the Bible, is to reject something. Um, not to accept it, not to be a part of it. So to put off is like putting it away from yourself and not being a part of it. So for our purposes, put off is to reject. Now the focus scripture that we have been keeping in mind for the entire series um, is found in Philemon 1.6, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And this is our focus scripture for this um, series because it talks about our our faith communicating something. And so we know that communication is both by word and by deed. The previous series looked at the words of communication. In this series, we're looking at the deeds of communication. If you'd like to take a look at any of those uh, previous videos, you can visit my website. It's my name, www.sherryhalesministries.weebly. Dot com. My name is spelled with a Y and also subscribe to the channel and then you will be able to um, see the videos when they're going up and um, be, you know, be alerted to new videos. The message, um, there's also a question we've been keeping in our mind for the entire series. Um, and that is, what message does my faith walk communicate? It's not a question to compare, to condemn or to measure. It's simply to remind us that our faith walk does communicate something. In fact, the Bible calls us living epistles. And the scriptures that I'll be looking at for this teaching video is found in Colossians 3 verses 1 through 9. The Bible study, study participants will be looking at Ephesians 4, 17 to 32. If you would like to uh, follow along for the Bible study, again, subscribe to the channel. And what you would do is watch this video, read Ephesians 4, 17, 32. When the Bible study video uh, goes up, you watch that video as well. And um, at the end of the Bible study, we always have, um, we have a discussion about what, we've t what we have learned about. And it always generates questions and it helps us to gain more insight into the topic. Um, and it's a very rich part of the Bible study. So um, I would suggest that you participate in that part as well. And um, and what you would do is just form your own Bible study uh, group. Um, if you don't have a Bible study group to discuss the topics with, then you can even just generate questions or comments for yourself, things that you, um, uh, you know, noticed or takeaways that you want to maybe think about a little more or even or even look into a little bit more. The overview um, for putting something off. So the Bible, so putting off um, in the Bible means to reject and not to wear it. The Bible tells us not to wear strife, envy, backbiting, idolatry, pride, wickedness, lust, greed, among many other things that are uh, prevalent in the kingdom of darkness and accepted and practiced and even flaunted in the world system that we live in today. When we study what the Bible tells us to put off, it will reveal and inform us of those things that are not a part of the kingdom of light, which is God's kingdom, and those things that God does not approve of. And so um, that's just an overview of putting off. Um, so I'm going to um, look at the scripture. So it is five, It is Colossians 3, 1 to 9. Typically, I will read the entire passage of scripture 
before um, I break it down into uh, sections and look at each verse. But I'm not going to do that this time. And I just ask that um, you would just, you know, read the complete um, passage if you have time to. That way you can, you know, hear it in its entirety with it before, um, you know, in addition to hearing me break it down. So let's see. Colossians 3, 1 to 9. And I will be looking at the King James Version. So verse 1. It just says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God. So if we be risen with Christ, that means that we are Christians. We have um, uh, become a Christian and um, when we become a Christian, we are a part of the, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ because he did it on our behalf, on our behalf. And so that's basically what it means. If ye th then be risen with Christ, so if we are Christians, and then it says, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So we're going to seek those things that are in the kingdom of God. Those things that God um, puts his stamp of approval on. Those are the things that are going to um, be of interest to us. Those are the things that we will want to pursue. The things that God endorses and uh, approves of. And then two, verse two, it says, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. So again, the same thing. Um, you know, people develop an affection for certain things. This is telling us to set our affection on things above and not things on the earth. So the things that we want to be fond of and have affection for are the things that are above not on the things of the worldly system, in other words. So as Christians, when, when we become a Christian, it, it, it is a, a transforming process. Um, you know, if we were going to live just like the world, then we can just stay a part of the world and we don't have to accept Christ. But once you accept Christ, you are supposed to allow Christ as your Lord to... Um, to be your Lord. And so that whole process involves a transformation. Um, we can easily just continue to live like the world if, if that's what we choose to do. But when you decide to become a Christian, there is a, uh, a process of being a, a Christian. The Bible tells us um, how to be a Christian. Um, and, and really, you know, I think that when people become a Christian and they say the sinner's prayer, but they don't do anything else to try to um, to live for God or live for Christ, and they just keep living the same way that they were before, you know, I really think that that is um, setting themselves up um, to, to think that they are a Christian when they're actually not. Because the Bible does talk about um, Christ telling uh, people at the judgment away from me I never knew you and so there are people that he's going to say that to and so it implies that there are going to be people that think that they are Christians and that God has accepted them and he's going to say no get away from me I don't know you and so when we become a Christian the Bible is even says that we become a new creation and so the Bible then tells us how to be this new creation. And I, I really think that, um, you know, there's not enough emphasis on the transformation process of becoming a Christian because there is a transformation process. It's not just living just like you lived when you were in the world. Um, again, if a person wants to do that, then they can just stay a part of the world and live exactly like they want to live because we all have a free will. But if you're going to seek out Christ, then you are also supposed to follow Christ. Um, and then verse three, 
for ye are for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ. So he's he's telling you this. He's saying for ye are dead. So when we come to Christ, the old man, the Bible talks about the old man. So the old man has actually um has actually died. The old man has died and we become a new creature in Christ. So this is implying that right here. We're not even to God, to the Lord, the old person that we that we were when we came to Christ, that man has died. Um, that natural man. And so now our life is saying our life is hid in Christ. We become a part of Christ. You know, these these concepts are very difficult sometimes to really grab a hold of. But you can clearly see here is talking about, um, you know, a, a major transformation taking place. And so that is what happens when you become a Christian. A major transformation um, takes place. So God does the initial transformation when we become a Christian because becoming a Christian, he says that the old man dies, but the new man. And so we're a new creature. The new creature part is the doing part. That's the process of, be of becoming that new person. Uh, we have to go through this process of learning what does God approve of and, and how to be like God wants us to be. The Bible is 66 books. You know, it's not 66 books just because, um, you know, the people that um, wrote the Bible just wanted to keep writing it's important every book is important every word in every book is important and so as a Christian we're supposed to take it to heart and allow this book to dictate how we're going to live our lives and then verse 4 goes on to say when Christ who is our life shall appear that's saying that again Christ now is our life who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory. This is talking about um, at um, the. This is talking about you know at the end time. So when Christ comes back to judge, we as Christians are also going to be a part of his party. In other words, think about an entourage. How there's an entourage surrounding someone. We are going to be like an entourage, uh, for lack of a better, um, uh, you know, interpretation or, or visual. The Christians are going to be like an entourage for Christ when he returns um, in glory. Verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, uh, inordinate affection, evil, concupiscence. Concu peace sense and covetousness which is idolatry he's saying to mortify these things so in other words don't allow these things to be our master but we are in Christ to master over these things for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience he's saying that his wrath that is judgment his judgment will come upon those who have not accepted him, who have not gone through a process of transformation to become that new creature, God will actually judge. Verse 7, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. He's saying, this is how you used to be before you became a Christian. All people, all humanity, we are born into uh, what is called a sinful nature because of what Adam did. And so every human being is born into the sinful nature and sin is attributed to them because of what Adam did. So verse number, let's see. Here's the word, the word that, um, this vid this teaching video is focusing on is coming up in verse 8 but now it says but now you also put off all these things he's telling us to put off all these things the things that that 
it just said and then also these other things he's saying put off so remember put off is to reject not accept not to be a part of those things these are the things he wants us as Christians not to be a part of anymore anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth then he says lie not one to another seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds again that is clearly telling you that when you become a christian a transformation is supposed to happen you are not supposed to remain just like you were when you were in the world a transformation because the way the bible um endorses um for people to live is different than the way the world um, lives and so this is clearly saying that there is a process that we must go through and that things that we that were acceptable as as just you know w before we became a christian are not acceptable to christ this is clearly saying it um let's see and that was actually verse number nine that's that's pretty much it and you know sometimes in the videos i try to go into more detail and and i try to break things down a, a little bit more but that speaks for itself i mean you know it, it's pretty much the thing is with with christianity either you accept the bible for what it says or you don't uh, and we all have our own free will so this is a teaching video so i'm teaching as far as what i just read you know no spin to it just reading what the word says and that's it and you know the hearer whoever the hearer may be will hear and can read it for themselves and interpret it for themselves but all ministers um and preachers and teachers of the word are supposed to teach the word as the bible spells it out we're not supposed to spin it or twist it or try to interpret it another way it's clear so the bible says what it says um and and i'm gonna leave it at that for this teaching video i do pray that it's been a blessing to you i do pray that it will open your eyes to the fact that being a christian is a big deal it really is a big deal it is a whole transformation process you you don't it's not like you know um like you just take on you you join a club and you take on now i'm a member of this club no being a christian is about a lifestyle it's about a lifestyle it's about a family the family of god and so i pray that the lord will speak to you through this video I pray that this video has been a blessing to you and I'm just going to go ahead and pray and wrap up. Father God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for the clarity of your word and thank you Lord that when we seek your word from a place of wanting to understand and know your word, you make your word plain and I thank you for that and I pray that you will enlighten the hearers so that they will hear, understand your word um, and be blessed by it. I ask that you will bless us, keep us, make your face to shine upon us, lift up your countenance upon us, be gracious to us, and give us peace. And everyone that agrees with that prayer can say amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God.